What's going on everyone? Today I'm going to show you how to set up your very own Skyrim Together Reborn server. This is a follow-up video to the guide I created showing how to get the game client modded and ready to connect to a server to play with others. I will actually be showing three different ways to get a server running. Two will be Windows based and the third option will be running it in a Linux environment using Docker. So before I begin, I will essentially be starting right up where my client-side configuration guide ended for Skyrim Together Reborn. If you haven't seen that video yet, check it out in the description below. The websites I will be showing will be linked in the description below as well. Anyhow, let's get started. So we're jumping back to the wiki page that I quickly showed in my client-side guide. So everything I'm going to be following is in this guide here. So in case you need any references to point back to that you feel are not in this video, then certainly take a gander at this website here. So I'm going to go ahead and show off the two Windows based methods right now. So depending on if you have the GOG version or the Steam version, just go ahead and reference the default installation paths that I had in the previous guide. Now, if you did go ahead and break from those default paths, then obviously it's on you to have to hunt down where you installed it to. So since I am using the GOG version, I'm going to go ahead and open up Windows Explorer. I'm going to go to this PC, double click into the C drive, GOG games, Skyrim Anniversary Edition, the data folder, Skyrim Together Reborn. And so the absolute easiest way to kick off a server is going to be literally just double clicking the Skyrim Together server option here, and then it's launched. It will complain that the resource folder does not exist. And so the easiest way to get out of this, we'll do a control C and control C again to go ahead and drop that is just literally right click in here, go to new folder and rename it resources. Now it's totally not necessary right now. However, it seems as though there are options I haven't found yet, but potentially are out there that you can add configurations in to that resource folder that can change things. So now if we go ahead and kick it off again, Skyrim together server, now it loads and it's no longer complaining that that resources folder doesn't exist. Now I'm going to go ahead and close out of this control C. And then we're going to go ahead and go to the config folder. And then let's go ahead and pop open this ST server file. I'm just going to right click on it, click edit. You can certainly open this up in notepad plus plus as well. If you prefer, instead of using just plain generic notepad. So in here, you can go ahead and change all the settings for the server itself. Now by default, everything's pretty much in pretty good shape here. I will go ahead and link a reference to what all of these mean. A lot of these are pretty self-explanatory. For instance, whether or not you want to add in a gold loss factor on death, enabling item drops, which is actually not recommended to have enabled, as it could cause instability with the server. XP synchronization by default is true. The time scale setting, the death system, Sinking player homes, enabling PVP is set to off by default. Enabling greetings is off. The difficulty levels are between one and five. Five being the hardest, one being the easiest. By default, four is on. I have found four to be pretty decent, and I usually just keep it at that. There's the mod policy, which basically means that it allows the two biggest mod clients to run. There's a mod checker, which is set by default to be off. By default, there is no password set to the server, but you can go ahead and type in one here, and then anyone wanting to join the server is going to have to obviously type that in. You can also go ahead and rename the server here. If you don't have the server publicly showing, and it's a private server, then really it doesn't matter what the name is here. Premium mode set to true. Max player count is eight, so you can alter the max player count here. What port they are connecting to is here. So that's the rundown to this configuration file. So we'll go ahead and close out of it. 
The key thing is if you are going to alter that configuration file, make sure the Skyrim Together server is shut down. Otherwise you could run into really weird things happening. And it may not even allow you to save the configuration file because it could be considered in use. All right, so let's move on to the second option. Now, one thing actually to mention before I move on to the second option is running the Skyrim Together server on a machine that is capable of running Skyrim to begin with is not actually going to eat up that many resources. So unless your computer is really, really struggling to run Skyrim in the first place, then you may, even, then you may just stick with this first option that I just showed you. So anyhow, on to the second option. So the second option involves basically picking out the critical files that are absolutely needed to get a server to run. And so out of this entire list here, you would need the sentry dash native folder, the config folder, obviously for the server configuration, logs is optional. It will create a new logs folder if it doesn't exist. The crash pad handler, obviously the Skyrim together executable and the stserver.dll. And also once again, you will need a resources folder in here to stop it from mentioning that the folder does not exist. So once again, you can just go ahead and create a folder in here, resources, and then you can go ahead and fire up the Skyrim together server and it's happy here. And then the happy way to shut it down, as I had previously mentioned, is just doing control C. And if it doesn't drop, give it a few seconds, control C again. If it doesn't drop again, just do control C again. It should drop for you. That is the happy way of shutting it down. So that is option two for you. Now onto the Linux side for option three. So we're gonna go ahead and use Docker. So two things to mention. If you don't have a Linux server already built up, feel free to take a look at the two guides I have down below that show either getting Ubuntu ready from start to finish or getting Debian ready from start to finish. I also have my Docker guide that will be in the description as well that you can follow where I try to streamline everything to make it nice and easy to set up. And so we'll go ahead and just reference this guide here and so in this case, I am SSH'd into my Debian server using PuTTY. And I will go ahead and have this document in the description down below so that essentially all you have to do is copy and paste everything I'm doing here into your SSH window. So this makes it incredibly easy. So the first thing we are going to do, we're going to elevate our privileges to root. So go ahead and type in SU, type in the password you have set for your root account. And now let's go ahead and just copy and paste line three in, hit enter, copy line five in, hit enter, and then let's copy line seven in and hit enter. And depending on your network speed and how fast your computer is, just be patient. Next, we're going to go ahead and copy in line nine here. Go ahead and hit enter. And the key thing we're looking for is the Skyrim together server does in fact exist here. So that's perfect. Don't worry about this portainer portion here. This is an optional thing that I had referenced in my Docker video. However, if you do have portainer installed, then it allows you to easily manage your server through the GUI. So I do recommend adding it. Now let's say that you want to go ahead and edit that server configuration file. Let's go ahead and copy in line 11 here. And so here is basically that same exact configuration file that you saw in the Windows environment. And then you can once again, just go ahead and down arrow and then move your arrow, your right arrow key or left arrow key over to the section that you want to change. Let's say that we want to enable item drops. Then we just go ahead and hit backspace to delete that. And we can type in true or we can just type in false again. So you go in and configure what you want here. And then in order to save it, we have to do a write out. So we will do control O file name to write. That's fine. Hit enter and then control X to exit it. 
One thing I do recommend is that once you've configured the ST server to INI, if you changed anything with it, that is, I would recommend running a Docker stop and a Docker start, or just do a Docker restart of the container just to make sure that configuration is actually set. And so you can follow either line 13, 15, or 17. Obviously, they're pretty self explanatory. Obviously, 13 is to stop it, 15 is to start it, 17 is to restart it. And I will quickly just go ahead and show you how it all looks right now. So we'll run line 13. And then if we do a docker space ps space dash a and hit enter, you'll notice that the status has now changed. So up here, it was alive for 42 seconds when we ran that command previously. Now it's in an exited state, so it is stopped. So if we want to start it again, run line 15, paste it in, hit enter. Let's do the docker ps-a again, which all I'm doing is arrow keying up for the last set of commands, hit enter. And now it's showing a status of up for 12 seconds so far. And then if we want to just go ahead and show off line 17, Paste it in, hit enter, and then we do docker ps-a again, hit enter, and it's been up for six seconds. Now for those of you who want to go ahead and use the portainer side of things, let me quickly just show that off. So logged into portainer, let's go ahead and click on our local system here. Let's go to containers, which currently we have two. And then obviously we have the portainer container, which is unselectable for the options here. However, if you take a look here, you will see that we now have the options up here. So instead of doing the text-based commands of stopping and restarting and all that good stuff, obviously we can't start it if it's already running, but we can effectively just use the GUI here to do those same exact commands. As you saw, the text-based ones are pretty simple, but if you like the GUI environment for managing it, then go ahead and just utilize this here. So we can stop it. And obviously it goes to red for exited, which means stopped in Docker land. We can click on it again. We can either start it or restart it, which will essentially both do the same things. So we'll just go ahead and do start. And it's running again. We can check it again, we could pause it, we could kill it, if for some reason it just won't stop. So we can go ahead and kill it right now, which I don't necessarily recommend you do, unless for some reason it just won't stop on its own, due to some sort of a runaway process. But anyhow, we can go ahead and fire it back up again, and everything is happy. Obviously another option you do have is remove which will go ahead and nuke that container right out. Anyhow, that's all you have to do to get a Skyrim Together Reborn server up and running, at least the base portion of it. I'll leave it in your hands to create the port forwarding rules on your router if you're planning to host it out. However, if you are hosting it as essentially a LAN party of sorts for a local area network, then it is fully functioning right now and you can have people go ahead and connect up to it via the IP of your server. If you found this video to be useful, please like it. Please subscribe to my channel. Check out my other videos as well that you might find interesting. Anyhow, until next time, take it easy.